Our next speaker is the director, Marketing Operations India subcontinent of Procter and Gamble, and who he'll be speaking on the topic advertising in the age of disruption, TV first or digital first. Well, uh, this looks like that it's going to be a very interesting session. So let's give a big round of applause for our next speaker, Mr. Abhishek Desai. Let's hear it loud for him. So great to be here. Uh, a very nice session from Mr. Sharma. Talked about the primacy of TV, and I completely agree with him. Uh, TV continues to be the king, or as he calls it, the big dog in the house. Uh, what I'm going to talk about is the fact of the, that this is the age of disruption, and how will advertising evolve in this age of disruption? Now, for those of you who are on social media, there has been something which has been trending for the past few days. Any guesses? What is that? Ten-year challenge. Yes, PUBG 2. Uh, ten-year challenge. For those of you who are living under a rock, let me sh share with you what really is a ten-year challenge. Uh, starting with me, okay? Though that is not the point of this presentation, ten-year challenge is what you used to look ten years ago and how do you look now? So I said, how do we extend this ten-year challenge to the world that we live in, the world of technology that we live in? And that took me to the first point. Ten years ago, the first Android phone was launched in India. Remember those days when the phone was used to make a call? And now, the phone is used for so many more things. I see people chatting away for half an hour, but not picking up the phone and calling each other. Right? So the world has changed. 300 million smartphone users in 2019, from the time when the first Android phone was launched. Going to the next one, remember those days when your Buaji would give you a missed call saying, I've reached home beta. To a time when the same Buaji is now sharing the good morning messages early in the morning. And you all have fake news uncles also, I'm sure. And I'm sure each one of you is in one family group that you are not able to exit. <laughs> so that is the reality of the new world. Again, 10 years back, remember those days, you used to hail the Kali Pili or the autos, not worried about getting rejected by in your, by your employers or opposite gender, but getting worried about getting rejected by those auto halas saying, no, I don't want to go where you want to go. But now you get the same cab delivered at your doorstep at, the, at, at your fingerprints, fingertips. So the world has changed, and so has TV. Remember those days it used to be called the idiot box, and the same idiot box has today now become smart. It's a smart TV, right? So the larger point I'm trying to make over here is, we are living in the age of disruption, right? And we better admit that we are in this age of disruption. Would you all agree that this is the age of disruption? Like he said earlier, right? We have seen more disruption in the last 10 years than in the last 100 years put together. And it will not change. But if you go back to history, it's something to note that disruption is not new. The world has been disrupted many times. Advertising platforms and the media industry has been disrupted many times. And through these ages, PNG has been at the forefront of driving disruption. Driving disruption in advertising, driving disruption in brand building, because that is the only way we can stay ahead of the game. So let's take a few examples here. Going back to 1882, the age when print started. We are the first company where we led the innovation in print advertising by mass marketing of brands. The age of brand building had begun then. So far, it was all about companies and we had started building brands. Fast forward a few years later, in 1923, we pioneered radio advertising. Radio disrupted the print industry. And back then, radio was genuinely the cool new thing in town. We partnered with cooking shows to get our brands placed and integrated into content. What came next? And we launched the first radio soap opera. Moving on, the age of television came. And within a span of five months after the first TV programming was launched in the US, PNG launched its first TV advertising in the middle of a mega league baseball match. And I don't know how many of you know this, but the term soap opera is derived from the fact that PNG started advertising our ivory soap through it. And this opera, the culture of soap opera began there. 
Right? So I'm just going back to the times when disruption really happened. We are in the midst of one such disruption, but it's not that disruption hasn't happened. The medium has changed, the way it has happened has changed, but disruption has happened before. Back in India, we were the first company to actually show a sanitary napkin on television. When, back in the time when it was considered a taboo, as recently in 1992. Coming closer to the digital age, we partnered with Facebook to create, to launch our, Mark, our Vector 3 Razor using a feature phone. So back in those days, 80% of Facebook users were on mobile phones, and most of them were actually using feature phones. So we programmed and piloted a feature phone delivered program, which actually helped launch the Vector 3 Razor in India. And there are many such examples. As we continue to do that day in and out, across touch points and across markets, China is at the forefront le leading the digital revolution and some really exciting stuff that PNG is leading there as well. So, the secret to staying ahead, through this age, PNG as the largest advertiser in the industry has continued to stay ahead of the game. And the question here is, here is, what is the secret? That has been the secret sauce which has been running for more than 180 years of brand building for this company. And the secret is the inherent belief that consumer is the boss. At the center of everything is consumer, while the disruption is happening around you, the center, the core of it is, at the, is, is the consumer, and that is what the focus is. I've had discussions with my boss, who's the CEO of PNG, where I've said, I'm not going to attend this meeting with you because I'm going to meet the real boss, right? Because the real boss is the consumer. And let us have a look at now at the consumers in the disruptive digital age. What is happening in this digital age to consumers? So of the data that we saw in the previous two sessions, consumers today are upwardly mobile. We are the number two mobile phone usage in the world. About 300 million smartphones as we talk today slated to go to 500 million. This is going to drastically change the entire ecosystem. If you go back in 10 years and we talk about the drastic change that has happened, you go future into 10 more years and you can just imagine what the future could look like. And while TV will continue to be there at the center of the living room, the family viewing time is getting disrupted more and more by individual time. That is the reality, you all know that, right? Like he said, we are immediately moving on to Google, we are moving on to Facebook, we are moving on to our social platforms, and there are different people on different screens doing different things while watching TV. So the world is changing. The question is, where could the world go? So I thought I'd share something with you, an example of China. I heard recently that in China, more than 70% of our spends are on digital. So I was wondering what is really going on. And guys, this is not a Star Wars story, right? This is not something that is out there, 2050, something is going to happen and change the world. But this is something which is real happening at our neighbor's place in China. So look at this chart. A telling story of what has happened to TV penetration and internet penetration as it continues to rise. As we dive deeper, as of now, TV and internet have the same penetration in China. They already have the same penetration. But this picture is still not complete. The question was, why is still bulk of the spends on digital? TV continues to be the primary medium, but bulk of the advertising spends are on digital. And the reason for that is, TV is not the TV that we talk about in India. 65% of TV in China is digital TV. Only 35% TV is the TV that we use as of today. So it's a mix of IPTV, it's a mix of OTT, it's on-demand television. So now the question is, if you're watching your Netflix or Hotstar or whatever OTT platform you're watching on your TV, is it digital or is it TV? What is it? It is digital, it is TV. So the reality is, boundaries are getting blurred. I think the world is moving to a stage where there is neither TV nor there is di digital. There is an integrated screen. There is a screen, there are platforms which are integrated. And that's the reality of this world. So the question is whether TV first or digital first. I would say, I would submit neither of the two. The only thing that can be at the center, the only person who can come first 
is actually the consumer. Going back to the times we were talking earlier, disruption through the ages, what didn't change was consumer first. And the philosophy of keeping the consumer at the heart of everything that we do. And in a world where more and more things are integrated, we we'll need to reinvent ourselves. I completely agree today TV is king. The fact that 800, plus, 800 million plus consumers are watching TV and that number is only growing. Just that the definition of TV is probably going to change very soon. And the world is not going to be a TV world or a digital world, it's going to be an integrated world. So how do we thrive in this age of disruption? As advertisers, as marketers, what do we need to do to thrive in this age of disruption? And I have three submissions, three points to raise over here. The first one is raising the creative bar. Second is stepping up our game as advertisers. And third, a wake up call to all of us sitting here and outside this room who are in the field of advertising. Going to the first one, raising the creative bar. The reality is we need to now earn the consumer's attention. The consumer continues to spend more time on the digital platforms, not spending less time on TV. Consumer is consuming more and more of media and we need to fight for that consumer's attention in a way that we don't disrupt or annoy the consumers. So how is that going to happen? The center of it is creativity. At PNG, we believe that creativity is a must have. It is not a nice to have. And creativity is the center of everything that we do. At the heart of it is what we call as the creative compass. I really like that metaphor because at the center of the creative compass are insights that tap into consumers, that make our brands relevant, and that will, make, that will create an impact in the consumer's lives through our brands. But the creative compass also gives us the freedom to have a cultural point of view, to play a broader role in consumers' lives, to be an agent of social change, and to touch heartstrings as well along the process. So what I intend to do is just play a few, few of our creative work that we have recently done in India as well as globally and see how we step changing the creative game, which I think it's extremely relevant in today's world if we want to advertise in the disrupted, disrupted digital slash integrated world. So if, can I request the first ad to be played? Yeah, just your typical Super Bowl car ad, right? Or a hilarious beer ad. <laughs> or whatever ad this is. Whatever. But it's a Tide ad. What? It's a Tide ad. What makes it a Tide ad? There are no stains. Look at those clean clothes. What else would this be an ad for? Diamonds? A gift that lasts for a new time. It's time for a cold refresh. <laughs> tide ad. Fall into the sleep of no. you. No. Tide. No. Tide ad. Extreme. No. Tide. Tide. Meet the all-new. No, it's a Tide ad. Tide. So, does this make every Super Bowl ad a Tide ad? I think it does. Watch and see. Hello again, ladies. Is your man the kind of man who would climb the height? <clears throat> I'm in a Tide ad. Nice pants. Get off my horse. Tide Sometimes the signs are hard to ignore. But whenever you see clothes this clean, that's a Tide ad. Clean clothes may be an indication of a Tide ad. Tide users experience 10 times more cleaning power. Tide is America's number one detergent in America. Beautiful. Like a Tide ad. Sarah? Sarah? It's a Tide ad. I'm sure you're all familiar with advertising during Super Bowl in the US, right? And a lot of innovative advertisement actually is premiered during that. And we launched this ad in the middle of the Super Bowl. And we took over all the ads that were advertised on during the Super Bowl. Because each and every ad was actually a Tide ad. Can you play the second video? Mommy, 
कहीं नाराज तो होने ही वाली वो तो चाहती है कि मैं डॉक्टर ही बनूं। इसने हॉलीडेज खत्म और बोर्डिंग स्कूल शुरू एक दिन भी एक्स्ट्रा रुकने नहीं दिया मम्मी भी ना मम्मी ने अपनी लाइफ अपने आप ही बनाई अठारह साल की थी जब उनके फादर ने उन्हें घर से निकाल दिया अकेले रहने का तो सोचने से भी डर लगता है मैंने अपने पापा को कभी देखा नहीं और मेरी असली माँ वो बहुत बीमार रहती थी उनके बारे में सिर्फ एक ही दिन याद है जो मैं कभी भुला नहीं पाती एक दिन कुछ लोग आए और उन्हें एम्बुलेंस में ले गए नहीं आई फिर एक दिन मम्मी आई बहुत प्यार से मुझे अपनी गोद में बिठाया और मुझे अपने घर ले गए रात मेरे साथ बैठी रही सुबह मम्मी ने एक सुंदर सी रेड फ्रॉक पहनाई मेरे लिए ढेर सारे चिप्स बनाए <laughs> मम्मी के साथ दस साल हो गए अब तो मम्मी मम्मी कम और दोस्त ज्यादा बन गई संडे हम दोनों का फेवरेट दिन है बालों में तेल लगाने के बाद दोपहर में मेरा फेवरेट लंच कड़ी चावल और रात में डर लगता है पर मम्मी होती है ना तो नहीं लगता ये है मेरी मम्मी है ना प्यारी मम्मी ने लाइफ में इतने प्रॉब्लम्स देखे कितना कुछ सहा है फिर भी उन्होंने हमेशा मेरा ख्याल रखा है सिविक्स बुक में तो लिखा है कि सबके लिए बेसिक राइट सेम होते हैं फिर मम्मी को क्यों नहीं इसलिए मैं डॉक्टर नहीं लॉयर बनूंगी Yeah, so this is the creative canvas I was talking about, right? At the core of it, continues to be our brands and the roles that they play in consumers' lives. But the canvas provides something much larger that we can do, which can have a cultural larger impact, which can be either funny, it could be poignant, or it could be emotional. I'm going to show one more in this series. ऑन with a movement called touch the pickle movement so just a few um, 
examples of the work that the creative canvas can bring to life in today's age of disruption. The second one is stepping up. Stepping up as brand leaders. At PNG, we produce thousands of ads and we reach millions of consumers. And we believe that it is a desperate need, it is our responsibility for us to be a force for good and a force for growth. As big brands, we have responsibilities in the larger, cult larger cultural and social dynamics. And we need to step up to this challenge. We believe that as brands, we can no longer be restricted to what we or the brand or the product stands for, but we need to play a larger role in the society. And again, I'm going to share a couple of examples here, starting with the first one on Ariel, where we did a campaign on dad sharing the load. Nana, here go. Shield, leg, helmet. Homework, okay? Papa, you need to take your house. Hello? Yeah, I'm just going to send you the email in five minutes. Yeah, give me five minutes. I'm working on the press. My little girl. Yeah. Um, okay. How big is it? It's free. 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 I'm so proud. And I'm so sorry. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Fine. Sorry that you have to do all of this. Sorry that when you were playing at home, I didn't stop you. Why? I didn't say that this is not only your work. It's your husband's work. But how do you say it? And don't give me a green shirt. I haven't done your mother's help. And you have seen what you have done. Where are you? 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 और तुम जैसी कोई छोटी सी लड़की चाय बनाने की एक्टिंग करती होगी उसके डैड की तरफ से सॉरी तुम्हारे डैड की तरफ से सॉरी और हर उस डैड की तरफ से सॉरी जिसने कई कई सालों से एक गलत एग्जाम्पल सेट किया पर अभी भी देर नहीं हुई इस सॉरी के साथ मैं अपनी तरफ से एक छोटी सी कोशिश करूंगा कि घर के काम में मम्मी की हेल्प करूं, किचन का किंग ना बन पाऊं तो कम से कम लॉन्ड्री में तो हाथ बटाऊं, इतने साल एक गलत एग्जाम्पल सेट किया है अब कुछ सही कर जाऊं, तुम्हारा पापा Interesting, right? The sparking conversations, these are sparking conversations that are relevant for our day-to-day -day lives. These are sparking conversations in our homes There's, and thereby societies. And we're now brought the next edition of this and I wanted to share the next edition which has just been released. I'm making a whole poli. Your brother's favorite. तेरे रूम की क्या हालत बना रखी है इसने ना बस पूछ मत हाँ तो तू बता रही हूँ सुबह सुबह कैसे फोन किया हम्म ऑफिस नहीं गई क्या जॉब छोड़ दिया मतलब अरे ऐसे कैसे तरक क्यों हुई थी तुम्हारी? ये हम भी कितना प्राउड फील कर रहे थे। अचानक ये जॉब छोड़ना रियो कैसे? क्या हुआ? क्यों जॉब छोड़ रही है? क्यों? पर बेटा शादी के बाद घर के काम बढ़ जाते हैं। लेकिन तू अकेले थोड़ी है। आकाश भी तो है तुम्हारे साथ। वो घर के काम में तुम्हारी हेल्प कर सकता है, ह� उसे घर का काम नहीं आता मतलब ऐसे कैसे नहीं आता नहीं आता होगा 
गलती हमारी है बेटियों को पैरों पे खड़ा होना सिखाते हैं लेकिन बेटों को हाथ बटाना नहीं सिखाते तो और एक बार सोच ले मैं रात को फोन करती हूं क्या हुआ मां क्या हुआ मां गलती हो गई सुधार रही So taking the conversation further and deep diving into core consumer insights and figuring out figuring out why that challenge happens today right because the challenge was created much earlier interestingly in 2016 we did a survey and we found that 63% of married men felt that household work was not their job we did the same survey in 2018 that number has come down to 52% so it's interesting what started as a brand idea has now translated into a much bigger movement which is bringing a meaningful change and it's becoming an agent of change in society another work global whisper hi aaron show me what it looks like to run like a girl oh, my hair Show me what it looks like to fight like a girl. <laughs> Now throw like a girl. Oh. So do you think you just insulted your sister? No. I mean, yeah, insulted girls, but not my sister. My name is Dakota and I'm 10 years old. Show me what it looks like to run like a girl. Throw like a girl. like a girl What does it mean to you when I say run like a girl? It means run fast as you can. So the larger point here is we need to step up as advertisers. We need to step up step up as brand builders and start playing a larger role in this disrupted world. whether be it be tv it be digital it be print whatever the medium be there's a role that brands need to play and that's a role which is much more integral to consumers lives and the last message i want to leave all of us uh, here with is to wake up wake up to a new reality wake up to a reality where consumers don't like ads they are skipping ads they are blocking ads they are saying most of our ads are unwanted uninspiring uninteresting and therefore ineffective so in that world as advertisers as broadcasters as this entire community what do we need to do we need to come together and solve this problem for consumers it's time we all wake up if you look at digital ad spends by 2020 about 18000 crores are going to be spent on digital medium the same ads for or for the same brands are also reaching consumers through tv i'm bombarding ads to consumers who are watching the same ad on hotstar the same ad on youtube and the same ad on star z sony when consumers are saying they don't want to watch a lot of ads and it's such a colossal wastage of money for all of us we are spending money across touch points not know, not knowing what's happening in an integrated world The reason TV has flourished is because there's a absolutely highly reliable TV measurement system and our friend Parthos here they've been championing the cause the reason it is happening today is it's a measurement system which everybody trusts a measurement system which is highly reliable what we need now is a unified measurement system 
a world where we are able to segre not segregate but integrate consumer viewership across platforms because the 18000 crores that we are spending here needs to be spent the right way and it's a responsibility that all of us here advertisers broadcasters advertising agencies anybody in the advertising field and most importantly for the consumers we need to deliver on so i would really push on and encourage all of us to start working towards a unified measurement system because that is really the need of the hour we need to continue to step up right we talked about the need to step up to be the force for good the force for growth and we need the ability in tomorrow's world to be able to razor sharp target consumers pampers is one of our leading brands and we reach moms of newborn babies 0 to 2 years typically one in 10 households have a baby a newborn baby but what do we do we advertise we sprinkle our advertisement mass to consumers right and we need to get into a place where we need to be much more precise and be able to reach only moms because they deserve our message and not everybody else so coming back to the 10 year challenge imagine us coming here again 10 years later 2029 in february and doing a 10 year challenge what would the world look like we think what is reality today it's going to be disrupted so fast that we don't know how the world is going to change like mr sharma said 10 years of disruption more than the past 100 years of disruption trust me the next 2 years of disruption will be more than the last 10 years of disruption are we all prepared for that disruption or not and to thrive in that age of disruption going back to the three points the call that i make to all of you here is to raise the creative bar so step up to be a force for good and a force for growth and to wake up to this new reality of integrated world where we can all work together and create a as strong unified measure system that bark has provided us right so it's been a privilege being here thank you so much for being a patient audience i loved every bit of it thank you